In module 10, we introduced integration and we looked at kind of what we refer to as simple cases, not to imply that those problems are necessarily easy, but um, the cases that we've considered so far, we have some basic formulas and theorems we can throw at those in order to find our results. What we want to look at now in modules 11.1 .1 and 11.2 are some more complex cases where what we're going to be doing are some different substitutions to rewrite our problem so that we get to a problem we can integrate using the problems that are the properties that we've already established. So with uh, our first module here, we want to talk about integration by substitution. And in general, integration by substitution is the best method to apply whenever we have a problem that fits the chain rule. So what we're looking to do is undo a derivative, because that's really what integration is. It's just that inverse process of taking derivatives. So if we have a problem that fits the result of a chain rule problem, then we want to use integration by substitution to undo that and evaluate our integral. So the integration rules, like I said, were for some of the simple cases. Now we want to look at some more complex cases. And before we jump into this, let's start with a refresher of what the chain rule said. So the chain rule for taking the derivatives of composite functions, so we have g of x is some interior function of f. To take the derivative of that, we would take f prime, evaluate it at that interior function, and then we would multiply that by the derivative of that interior function. So if we can identify these problems that fit that general pattern, then we can apply this technique of integration by substitution. So the question becomes, how do we identify if a given function fits that pattern? <clears throat> and that's what we want to talk about with a few quick examples here before we actually get into the process of performing this integration by substitution. So our first indefinite integral here is the integral of 3x squared times e to the x cubed minus 1 dx. So what we can see here, if we look at e to the x cubed minus 1, we have e being, being raised to some power besides just x. So x cubed plus 1, or I'm sorry, minus 1, is the interior function. And if we take the derivative of x cubed minus 1, then as a result, we're going to get 3x squared. So we have x cubed minus 1. If we take its derivative, we're going to get 3x squared, which is the other portion of this problem. So the substitution that we would want to make in this problem would be u equals x cubed minus 1. So very quickly, we'll start talking about what we do once we identify the substitution. But for right now, we just want to look at a few more cases where we identify what we would substitute. So in our second example, we have 3x plus 4 raised to the 10th power times 3. So here, 3x plus 4 is the interior function. So 3x plus 4 is our interior function. And if we take the derivative of 3x plus 4, we'll get 3, which is the other part of our problem that we have here. So we would want to set u equal to 3x plus 4. So what we're really looking for is to identify that interior function. And then hopefully the derivative of that interior function will match up very closely to the other remaining portion of the function that we're integrating. In our third example, we have e being raised to the x squared power. So x squared is that interior function. And if we take the derivative of x squared, that's going to give us 2x, which again is that remaining portion of our integral problem. So in this case, we would want to let u equal x squared. In our second to last example, we have 3x squared over 1 plus x cubed. So this is like 1 over x, but instead of that just being x in the denominator, we have this function 1 plus x cubed. 
So our interior function here is 1 plus x cubed. And if we take the derivative of that function, that'll give us 3x squared, which again matches up with that remaining piece that we have left over. Oops. So we would want to let u equal 1 plus x cubed. And then in our last example, again, we've got some function here being raised to the fifth power. So that interior function is x squared plus 2x plus 5. If we take the derivative of that function, that will give us 2x plus 2, which again matches up with this part of our function that we would have left over there. So we would want to set u equal to x squared plus 2x plus 5. So again, we want to just be clear to, to start this whole process of substitution. It comes to uh, down to identifying that we have some composite function, identifying what that interior function is, and then we're going to let this new variable u equal whatever that interior function is.